can a pair of twins have different fathers? Greek mythology believes so, or at least the story of Castor and Polydeuces does. Castor and Pollux, often known as the Dioscuri, were the children of Zeus, the ruler of the gods, and Tyndareus, the Spartan king. While they may not be famous names today, their tale is intertwined with that of their sister Helen of Troy, and even more notably, the twins' combined names are given to one of the stars in the constellation Gemini. They became some of history's greatest heroes as a result of their participation in the Caledonian boar hunt and the Argonauts expedition. They were worshipped as gods after their death. But what is their entire story? Make sure you watch this video till the end to find out. And before we begin, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, because we upload some of the best yet least known mythical stories on our channel every now and then. Now, let's get started with this video. The Dioscuri were twin brothers who were inseparable in both life and death. The most popular myth, however, states that Castor and Pollux had separate fathers. Queen Leda was among the most attractive people in her day and such beauty would not go unnoticed by Zeus sitting upon his throne on Mount Olympus. Zeus, who yearned for Leda, changed into a beautiful swan and traveled to Sparta. He slept with her and got her pregnant. Leda then slept with Tyndareus that same night, and the union of Zeus and Tyndareus with Leda resulted in the birth of four children. Castor, Clytemnestra, Pollux, and Helen were Leda's four children. Of them, Castor and Clytemnestra were the progeny of King Tyndareus, and Pollux and Helen were thought to be the children of Zeus. Due to their close kinship, the identical twin brothers were given a single name. In Greek mythology, they were known as the Dioscuri, and in Roman mythology, they were known as Gemini. Helen would later become famous when she was abducted in Paris, and given the title of Helen of Troy, whilst Clytemnestra would marry King Agamemnon. Though the time frame of these stories is somewhat shaky, the brothers would have their own stories written about them. As they got older, Castor and Pollux acquired all the characteristics of Greek heroes, with Castor being well known for his expertise with horses, and Pollux rising to prominence for his fighting prowess, particularly his boxing talent. Castor and Pollux were universally named amongst the Argonauts, the crew of the Argo who sailed for Colchis with Jason. Pollux is renowned for defeating the king of Bebrises in a boxing bout while on the hunt for the Golden Fleece. The two were known for their seamanship as well, saving lives on several occasions. They even received stars on their heads as reward for guiding the Argo through a particularly severe storm. The duo may have also joined the heroes who took part in the Caledonian boar hunt. This well-known incident occurred with the goddess Artemis punished Onius of Caledon for failing to properly honor her by sending a monstrous boar to destroy his land. Many of the greatest heroes in Greek mythology, including Theseus, Peleus, the father of Achilles, and his brother Telamon, the heroine Atalanta, and Aeneas' son, Meleager, participated in the boar hunt in addition to Castor and Polydeuces. The heroic attributes were soon put to the test when their sister Helen was abducted. However, this was an earlier kidnapping by Theseus, rather than the one carried out by Paris of Troy. Helen was kidnapped from Sparta and brought back to Athens by Theseus and Pirithous after they made the decision that they were both worthy of marrying the daughter of Zeus. Castor and Pollux would then lead the Spartan army to Attica. The Dioscuri assaulted the city when Theseus was away, saved Helen, and kidnapped Theseus's mother, Aethra, in retaliation, who was then forced to become Helen's slave. Thus, the Dioscuri were renowned for being Helen's fierce protectors, and when the time came for Helen to get married, they actively participated in keeping the suitors of Helen in line. Tragically, when it came to saving Helen from Troy before the Trojan War, the two were absent. This absence is put down to the fact that they were no longer amongst the living. The myth of Castor and Pollux had developed such that Pollux, as was befitting the son of Zeus, was regarded to be immortal. But Castor, the son of Tyndareus, was thought of as immortal, and thus it was the latter who died. But how did their life end? It is believed that the twin sons of Tyndareus's brother, Idas and Lynceus, were the reason behind it and all as a result of their argument with them. There are several reasons behind this argument. Idas and Lynceus were engaged with Phoebe and Hilaria, the daughters of the Arcadian Lysippus. The wedding took place in their Messinian mansion. However, Castor and Polydeuces decided they wanted the brides for themselves after the wedding and took them away. So the duo was pursued by Idas and Lynceus, who chased them down and killed them in the subsequent fight. Naturally, Zeus wasn't happy with the fact that his son was killed in a manner so ruthless, and so Idas in turn was killed by one of Zeus's thunderbolts. Another legend claims that despite the fact that Castor and Polydeuces did kidnap Anhilaria, this was not the reason for their argument with Idas and Lynceus. Instead, a disagreement between the cousins stemmed from a joint livestock raid. Idas and Lynceus deceived Castor and Polydeuces into giving up their portion of the livestock while splitting their loot. In retaliation, Castor and Polydeuces stole the cattle back and then attempted to ambush Idas and Lynceus. Idas murdered Castor in the ensuing melee, while Polydeuces killed Lynceus. Then, before Idas could finish off Polydeuces, Zeus struck him with a lightning bolt. Zeus wanted to make his son Pollux immortal, but Pollux refused while his brother Castor was dead. The myth's most popular version involved a unique compromise. Zeus agreed. 
However, in order to maintain cosmic equilibrium, the Dioscuri would spend six months of the year in the underworld, and only half of the year in the heavens. In an alternate ending, Pollux was permitted to see Castor once every other day while Castor remained in the land of Hades, who was the god of the underworld. Most versions of the myth say that Zeus placed the brothers in the heavens as part of the constellation, a group of stars known as Gemini, and as a result, today the two brightest stars in the constellation Gemini are named Castor and Pollux. After this, Castor and Polydeuces were revered as gods all over Greece, but especially in Sparta. The twins were thought to be the protectors of sailors, who saw them as St. Elmo's fire. St. Elmo's fire takes place during certain severe weather conditions. It often has a cracking sound and manifests as a glow on the top of tall pointed objects, such as ship masts. Castor and Pollux gained their reputation as the guardians of sailors when stars began to appear on their heads when the Argonauts were at sea. From that point forward, sailors thought that the starry duo was rescuing them from a storm when they appeared at St. Elmo's fire. In Greece, Sicily, and Italy, the worship of the Dioscuri, who was said to have become deified after their deaths, was quite relevant. They were revered under the title of Anakes, or Anaktes, which meant lords in some areas, such as Attica. They appeared to sailors and travelers as twins riding white horses, or as mentioned, through St. Elmo's fire, and were thought to be especially helpful to them. The Dioscuri were also said to have invented the war dance and war song. The Spartan monarchs sometimes carried the Dokana, a depiction of the Dioscuri, as they went to battle. And that is pretty much it about the story of Castor and his brother. What are your thoughts on it? Make sure you comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future uploads. We'll see you next time with another amazing story. Until then, goodbye.